Okay, so again, good evening dyan sa inyo sa Philippines. Uh, let me request, Jax, ikaw mag, ano, mag-lead ng opening prayer. Hello? Oh, ikaw mag-lead ng opening prayer. Sige. Sige. Hello, Kuya. Narinig ba ako? Oo, oh, yes. Stable kasi. Bahay ako eh. Ah, sige. Narinig naman. Okay. Sige, let's pray. Maraming Diyos, mga kapangarihan sa lahat. Salamat po sa muling uh, oras na pinrovide nyo sa amin, mga young people. Panginoon, salamat sa privilegio na ito na kami ay makapagsama-sama kahit sa via online ng Panginoon kami ay makapagsama-sama ng puto sa, sa lesson na binigay niyo po sa amin. Salamat Panginoon sa patuloy ng paggamit kay Kaya Alexis, nung tuturo sa amin, salamat sa kalinuhan, sa kapat na binigay niya sa kanya, at siya po ay patuloy niya. Ingatan at gabayan sa kanyang mga ginagawa, especially sa kanyang pag-aaral. Uh, tulungan niyo siya sa pag-prepare ng uh, bawat lesson na ibibigay niya sa amin. Para kasi niya siyang patuloy at ingatan sila <clears throat> sa lugar ng Abu Dhabi. Kaya rin po tumulong sa amin, mga young people, na maintindihan po namin ang kanyang pinuturo sa amin. Sa buhay po namin ang lahat na ito. So, nawa ay makatulong sa amin. Sa amin. Uh, Ay, sila din na gamit. Okay lang. Lahat. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. Salamat kay Jan. Si Jan ba yung narinig ko? <laughs> okay. So, good evening ulit sa inyo. So, salamat sa patalastas kanina. So, but uh, we're done praying. Uh, tayo ay magsisimula na. So, again, uh, we will continue our lesson on Revelation. At uh, this uh, evening, uh, this afternoon in our place, um, mag-jump na tayo sa ating uh, isa sa mag- mag- napakagandang topic since we are living on what we call the church age. no? So ito ay <coughs> maganda nating pag-aralan, no? mga young people and i hope and i know i believe by the holy spirit we will learn a lot from these churches uh, that exist uh, during the first century no uh, right after so ito nga ay sinulat pinasulat ng panginoon kay John ano na si John uh, the beloved ay last uh, apostle na, na naka-survive sa mga persecutions, no? So, maybe this is uh, around the 90 or 1st century, no? So, ito ay uh, pag-aaralan natin itong pitong uh, churches sa Book of Revelation. Ayan, nakikita ninyo, ito yung Patmos. No? So, itinuturo ko sa aking mouse pointer. So, yan yung Patmos. Ang pinakamalapit, the nearest uh, place from Patmos is Ephesus. Tapos paikot yan. Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, then the seventh is the Laodicea. Okay? So, pag-aaralan natin sa gabing ito ang unang church okay? na, na mention sa book of Revelation. Now, we will go to Revelation chapter 2. So, simula tayo sa Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 down to verse 7. So, the order na magbabasa, uh, simula ni Naomi, then si Brother Michael, and then si Josiah. Nakita ko si Josiah kanina. O, si Chax muna nandito. So, si Chax. Then si Josiah, uh, kung may kasama man siya dyan. So, and then si Hannah. So, meron yung 7 verses. Sige, simula natin. Uh, Naomi, please, verse 1. Revelation chapter 2, verses, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Brother Michael, verse 2. 
I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot, cannot bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. Verse 3, Chucks. Verse 3, And has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Okay, see, see. Josiah, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left the first life. Nikasama ka dyan, Josiah? Wala pa. Okay, si Hannah. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Si uh, Lemuel, A L J. Verse six, Revelation, chapter two, verse six. Nawala. Nandiyan ka ba, Lem? Ito pa. Okay, verse 6, please. Revelations 2, 6. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicol... Nicol of the Nicolaitans, mm -hmm. which I also... Then si Pauline, verse 7. Verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Okay. Amen. So, bless the Lord for the reading of His Word. So, again, the first church that we're going to study is the church at Ephesus, okay? So now, meron tayong outline in studying the book of uh, the churches in Revelation, rather, meron tayong susundin na outline, okay? So ang outline natin ay ito. The first one is we will study the background of the city or the background of the church, okay? The background of the city or the background of the church and the next thing that we're going to, to uh, study is the chosen title of Christ. Okay? The chosen title of Christ. Number three, we will study about the commendation, meaning to say the positive things that the Lord uh, saw sa mga churches na ito. So now, particularly to the church at Ephesus. And then, sa fourth one, we will study the condemnation. Pag sinabing condemnation, kung yung commendation ay positive, yung condemnation ay negative. Ibig sabihin, the Lord Jesus Christ saw something negative to this church. Therefore, He needs to do something about it. So, hindi niya hahayaan na magpatuloy ang church na uh, kung nasaan siya. No? And then, the next one is the calling. Or counsel, ano yung binigay na, ano ang panawaga ng Panginoon sa church na ito at ano yung counsel no, na kanyang ibinigay. And then next, number, uh, number six is the commitment. Pag sinabing commitment, ano yung promise ng Panginoon no, sa mga uh, mananampalataya dito sa mga churches na ito. Okay, ito yung mga hanapin ninyo. Kasi next lesson sa second church, Bibigyan ko kayo ng homework. No? Itong first church na pag-aaralan natin, ako muna. Okay? Though ituturo ko lahat ng churches, pero gusto ko kayong mag-outline. No? Uh, ito yung homework ninyo sa next church na pag-aaralan natin. And then the last uh, thing that we're going to learn is the conclusion. Though the conclusion is very easy, no? nandyan na yan, makikita, na, makikita nyo later on. So ito again yung outline ng ating pag-aaralan every god willing every uh, sunday no ng 7 pm or 7:15 pm 
ito yung outline na ating susundin. Okay? Para hindi kayo maligaw. No? So, madali siyang tandaan. Puro letter C. Di ba? Puro letter C. City or church. The chosen title of Christ. The commendation. The condemnation. The calling or the counsel. Then, the commitment. And next is the conclusion. Okay? So, now, let's proceed with our uh, first church. The first church that we're going to study is the church at Ephesus. And then this church, nakita nyo naman sa verse 4. Ang sabi sa verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Dito natin nakuha, nakita, nakuha yung kanilang titulo, no? yung title na ibinangalan natin. Nakalagay dito, the church that lost its love. Okay? Sabi dito, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Now, before we proceed, uh, kung doon sa verse na yun, pag-aralan muna natin, syempre, yung uh, background. So, I hope that uh, to some of you na hindi naka-on yung video, no? I, I, I'm hoping and I know that you are listening no? very carefully and I hope that you will uh, give your attention sa ating pag-aaral ng Salita ng Diyos this evening. So, the church that lost its first love. Now, let's go to the city. Bigyan ko kayo muna ng mga background, a short background of the city or how this church uh, was, uh, how this church started. Paano nagsimula no, itong church sa Ephesus? Kilalang kilala nyo yan. Meron tayong book sa Bible na Ephesians. Tama? Um, kaya medyo uh, familiar kayo. no? So now, Dito sa verse uh, ver chapter 2 again by verse by verse natin titingnan unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write this thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks so meron sinabi diyan to the angel of the church of Ephesus <clears throat> the greek word ang angelos or angelos okay which has been, the NBA, being transliterated in the English word angel. Okay? So, English word angel is frequently used in the Bible of angels. Pagka sinabing messenger or yung Greek na angelos, usually it is used sa word na talagang literal, yung angel, no? yung, yung uh, spirit beings, na created beings as well. No? Yun yung mga anghel. But here, so, however, in several instances, sa ibang mga pagkakataon, this word refer to human messengers. Now, kanina ang huling nagbasa si, si Pauline, ano? Tama, si Pauline. So, let's go kay Ate Krisha. So, Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. So, Matthew chapter 11, verse 10. Matthew 11, verse 10. Matthew chapter eleven verse ten. Mm -hmm. For this is, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, he shall prepare thy way before thee. Okay, yung angel at yung messenger sa Revelation at dito sa Mark eleven verse ten is the same Greek word, no? Ang ang word na ginamit dito ay word na angelos, okay? So, meaning to say, there are times na ginagamit yung word na angel, uh, pero ito very special, ano lang, no? Because some, some says that this is really angel. But we, we believe, I believe, that this, these messengers, these messengers are the pastors, no? or, or any prophets or teachers, no? Na kailangan magbasa sa kanila dito. So, doon sa Mark 1, 2, buksan natin si Micah naman, Mark 1, verse 2, Mark 1, verse 2. Mark chapter 1, verse 2. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Okay, messenger na naman. So, yung messenger na yun is again, angelos. Pero ito ay hindi yung literal na angel. Ito ay talagang mga tao. No? So, sa Luke chapter 7, verse 24, uh, Rachel, Luke 7, verse 
Luke chapter 7, verse 24. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What okay. went out okay, continue. the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind. Okay, so nakita nyo na naman yung uh, word na messenger dyan. Angelos din ang ginamit. So, pero mga tao yun, di ba? So, in, that, those are the several instances, hindi na natin pupuntahan yung iba, wherein ginamit yung word na ang angel or the angelos, ginamit yun sa mga tao. Okay? So now, it is best understood here that this angel is referring to human messengers. Human messengers to the seven churches who were probably the pastors or prophets whom the message was to be delivered to the congregation. Kasi di ba sabi ng Panginoong Isus kay John, isulat mo ito, yung mga bagay na nakita mo, and the things which are and the things which shall be after. So itong mga uh, bagay na nakita mo ay isulat mo at ibigay mo sa mga messengers or sabi dyan sa angel, so we believe, so I believe that these angels are the messengers na mga tao, human messengers, either pastors or uh, prophets. So, yun yung sa verse 1. Now, the messenger of the church at Ephesus, which at that time was large, metropolitan city, malaking city ito. Kumbaga, kung nasaan yung church ngayon, sa Mighty Fortress Baptist Church, di ba, nasa Makati, yan ay city. Pag sinabing Makati, mayaman. No? Mayaman na city yan. Parang ganito rin ang Ephesus. At was undoubtedly an important uh, uh, person and Christian leader of the time. So ito rin yung mga naging leader ng church ng Ephesus ay mga uh, talagang magagaling. No? So Ephesus was the most prominent city in the Roman province of Asia Minor. So at this time, and already had a long history of Christian witness. So makikita natin dyan ang uh, history at babalikan din natin yan sa Acts mamaya no? kung paano nagsimula ang church dito sa Ephesus and it is it is the only one of the seven churches that is mentioned in the book of Acts and was a recipient of one of Paul's epistle so walang ibang churches sa book of Acts na na-mention, yung ibang churches dito yung the next six churches hindi na-mention ito sa book of Acts, okay? So, ito lang, Church ng Ephesus. So, the account of the riot, babasahin natin yung riot sa Ephesus, resulting from Paul's preaching of the gospel sa Acts 19, 28-41, is an amazing testimony to the power and effectiveness of early Christian witness in this important city. So, punta tayo sa Acts para makita natin kung paano nagsimula bago tayo pumunta sa chapter, uh, sa verses 28, babalikan pa natin yung mga verses before that. no? Ako na lang magbabasa niyan. So, titingnan natin sa chapter 19. Uh, maybe let's start from, mag tayo sa verse 28. Dito tayo sa chapter 19, verse 19. Tingnan nyo ha. Napakaganda ng, napaka-dramatic ng uh, mga pangyayari. Kung sa Bible ninyo, merong nakasunat dyan, Paul's work in Ephesus. Nandito, nakita niya si Apollos no? sa verse 1. 19 verse 1, it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, punta siya na Ephesus, and finding certain disciples. Now, nung uh, nag... Karoon, nag, nandun si Apostle Paul na maraming miracles na na-perform, no? Si, Ap si Apostle Paul, sa tulong, of course, the power of God that was given to him. Tingnan nyo sa verse 19. Now, many of them, 19 verse 19, many of them also which use curious arts, brought their books together, yung mga magicians. So marami ditong mga magicians, mga manguhula, etc., etc. No? So they brought their books together and burned them before all men. Sinunog nila. May tanyo ha, sinunog nila. Dahil sila'y nakakilala sa Panginoon, ganito ang response. If you are really in Christ, you will leave the things behind, the things that are not real, that are not godly. No, ito yung resulta na sila ay nakakilala sa Panginoon. Sabi dito, and many, sa verse 18, and many that believe came and confessed and showed their deeds. Hindi lang sila naniwala na ganun na ganun, ganun, ganun na lang at nagpatuloy sila sa masasamang buhay nila. No, ang sabi dito, many of them 
which also you which use curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver grabe yung halaga na isinuko nila no they surrendered everything and then sa so verse 20 so mightily grew the word of god and prevailed through that lumago yung gawain doon sa Ephesus at nagkaroon ng riot sa so verse 21 nagkaroon ng kaguluhan kasi uh, Dahil gumagawa sila dito ng mga Diyos-Diyosan, lalong-lalo na ang Diyos na sinasamba nila dito is si Diana. No? Si Diana or si Artemis. Minsan, confused, sabi nga nila, confused minsan ang Roman gods. Hindi nila alam kung lalaki o babae. But the goddess Diana, nagreklamo sila ngayon. Bakit ito si Apostle Paul? Simula nung nag-reach ito, sabi, niya, sabi nila, nalugi yung mga negosyo namin. Nakakita na ba kayo ng mga gumagawa ng Diyos-Diyosan? Yung, yung mga... Uh, Ano yan? Idols or sa katoliko yung mga santo ninyo. Di ba may mga gumagawa ng mga santo ninyo, mga gods? So, nalugi sila. Kasi yung mga tao ayaw na sumamba doon. So, siyempre hindi na sila bibili. So, siyempre i-display nila yun sa bahay nila, sasambahin nila, pupunas-punasan nila. Yun yung ginagawa nila kahit noon pa. So, ganun din yung mga sumasamba sa Diyos Diyosan. So, nagkaroon sila, nagreklamo sila, nagkaroon ng kaguluhan no at when we jump doon sa text na uh, babasahin natin sa chapter uh, 19 verse 28 and when they had heard these things they were full of wrath and cried out saying great is Diana of the Ephesians so nakita niyo si Diana si goddess Diana no si Diana ang Dios namin ang sasambahin namin so nagkaroon na, nag nalugi na sila lahat no? at buti na lang merong uh, almost sila ay pagtutulong-tulungan na no sila Apostle Paul buti na lang merong na pumagit na no? pumagit na sa kanila So nakita na nakita natin yung background ng church hindi ko na babasahin yung 28 to 41 masyado yung mahaba nakita natin yung kapangyarihan ng Panginoon doon pagkilos niya sa Ephesus kung paano nakakilala ang mga uh, tao sa Panginoon at nakita nyo yung resulta. Grabe naman. Talagang binenta nila yung kanilang mga ay, sinunog nila yung kanilang mga books about uh, magic at pinalikuran nila yung mga dati nilang buhay. So ganun ang mga nakakilala sa Panginoon. We will leave everything behind us. Though most of you, I know, most of you grow up the same with me. Lahat kayo halos ay lumaki sa church. No? Parang hindi natin naranasan na sumamba tayo sa Diyos Diyosan. But isa lang yung uh, isa sa makikita sa atin is yung change and we don't love sin. No? Hindi natin mahal yung kasalanan. Yes, sometimes we fall into sin. We uh, brought us ourselves sa kasalanan but we we are not happy with it. No? So ganun yung naging response nitong mga mga bagong mananampalataya sa Ephesus. Kaya nagkaroon ng lugi ang negosyo. No? Parang sa Chinese, lugi negosyo doon sa Ephesus. So yun yung simula ng simbahan doon. And then after Paul's ministry at Ephesus came to a close evidence indicates that Timothy, si si Timothy, di ba si 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 Paul sumulat kay 1st at saka kay 2nd Timothy, tama ba? O yung isang tao lang 'yon. <laughs> okay, hindi yung Timothy the 1st at Timothy the 2nd, ah. So yan ay sulat ni Apostle uh, Paul kay Timothy, no? So dalawang sulat. So most probably si Timothy ay nagpastor din doon. Nakita niyo naman yung payo ni Apostle Paul kay Timothy, no? He was a very young preacher at in-encourage niya, no, si Timothy. So he, he pastored there and then there is a reason to believe also that the Apostle John himself, mismo si John na na-exile sa Patmos, has succeeded Timothy as the pastor at large in Ephesus. No, siya ay naging pastor din doon. At di ba, sinabi ko nga sa inyo, bumalik siya at inorganize na yung mga bagay-bagay doon sa church. And it was to this church and to Christians living in Ephesus at the close of the first century, some 30 years after Paul, kasi patay na si Apostle Paul, that the first of the seven messages is addressed. So again, the last surviving apostle was the Apostle John. No? So, si, so si John ay mahaba yung naging buhay niya. So nakita niya, na nabalitaan niya kung hindi man nakita first hand nag, nakita na balitaan niya yung pagkamatay ng other apostle ni apostle Peter by the way yung prediction ng pagkamatay ni apostle Peter ay sinulat ni John no so yan ay 
yan ang uh, background no ng city na ito or yung church then at the same time okay so si yung city na ito ay very a uh, city that uh, worship many gods no especially si Diana or si Artemis okay so now we will proceed to the next C so the first C is the city and the church we'll go to the next C ano yung next C natin the chosen title of Christ and the chosen title of Christ na, gina, na he chose this, may reason kung bakit niya ginamit yung title na ito no, sa mga churches. Ang sinabi niya dito, Christ, the sovereign ruler. So we will read from Revelation, balik tayo sa Revelation chapter 2. Sabi ng Panginoon, verse 1 pa rin, And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, This thing saith he, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Okay? <clears throat> he is the one holding the seven stars in his right hand, and he walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So positionally speaking, Jesus Christ is always in the midst of the churches. No? Siya ay nasa kalagitnaan ng mga simbahan. Christ is introduced in the message to the Ephesus as the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walk among the seven golden lampstands. Or uh, yung candlesticks, palit, palitan nyo ng lampstand, no? Mas, mas maganda. So the, this portrayal of Christ corresponding to that given early in the first chapter of Revelation, pinag-aralan natin yung first chapter ng Revelation, kung babalikan ninyo, nandoon din yan, yung title na yan, no? It's a symbolic presentation of the fact that Christ holds the messengers of these churches. Ibig sabihin, hawak ng Diyos yung mga messengers and even the church itself. In His right hand, in a place of sovereign protection as well as divine authority over them. Meaning to say, so nakalagay nga sa title natin, chosen title of Christ, Christ is the sovereign ruler. The Lord Jesus Christ is telling them, I am the sovereign ruler. Okay? I am, I have the full authority sa church. Okay? Siya ang may full authority. The word hold, the word for hold is from the Greek word kraton. Or kraton. Means to hold authoritatively. So yung nakita nyo yung uh, this thing say it he that holdeth the seven stars. Ibig sabihin, he is holding uh, the messengers, the church with authority. So, ang Panginoon ang siyang may hawak ng lahat, especially ng kanyang mga simbahan. So, therefore, ibig sabihin, if he's, he has the authority to hold the church, he will preserve the church. No? He preserve niya. The messengers, therefore, are held in divine protection. Ibig sabihin, we are under protection and under divine control, echoing what, what John had written earlier about the security of the believer. So, let me as uh, si Nathan to read John 10, 28 to 29. So magandang verse. I think, alam nyo yung kantang to, di ba? Kanta ito eh. John 10, 28 to 29. John 10. John chapter 10, verse 28 to 29. Mm -hmm. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me mm -hmm. is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Okay. Pakituloy mo nga, Nathan, yung next na verse. I and my Father are one. Yes. So nakita nyo yung kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. So parang ganito, hold tayo ng Panginoong Jesus, and God the Father is also holding the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, Secured tayo. No? Yan yung tinatawag natin na eternal security or security of the believer. Kaya sinasabi nila tayong mga Baptist ay once save always save. Pero yung once save always save na yan ay mas malalim pa yung meaning niyan. No? So yan, nakita ninyo na ang Panginoon ang may authority. He holds everything in His hand. <clears throat> so now, so yan yung ating uh, when it comes to the second C, ano yung first C again? The church or the city. 
So later on, so sa mga susunod na uh, si natin, pag-aaralan pa natin yung a bit background, no historical background. So now, next natin na si, so tapos na tayo sa uh, church or the city, and then now we go, kanina pumunta tayo sa chosen title of Christ, sa chapter, still chapter 2 verse 1, and then, dito naman tayo pumunta sa commendation. Kaya sinabi ko sa inyo yung commendation, ito yung positive thing na nakita ng Panginoon sa church ng Ephesus. Okay? So kaya kasi ang Panginoon, sabi niya diba dito sa chapter 2 verse 2, I know thy works. So pag sinabi ng Panginoon na I know thy works, He knows everything. No? So in the, He knows the church he knows us as a church. Kunyari, itong mighty, kayo, nasa Mighty Fortress Baptist Church, uh, Makati. Kami, nasa Mighty Fortress Baptist Church, Abu Dhabi. Alam ng Panginoon, God knows everything about us, not just as a church, but also as individuals. Isa-isa. Kunyari, si Jaja and Jojo. <laughs> si Jaja and Hana. No? So, sabi ng Panginoon, I know thy works, you as a church, but at the same time, I know you, Jaja and Hannah. I know what you are doing. No? What are you and who are you in the church? Okay. So, wag sinasabi, yun ang uh, sinasabi ng Panginoon dito, I know everything about you. Therefore, alam ng Panginoon kung sasabihin niya positive or negative. So, dito sa church ng Ephesus, meron siya munang sinabing positive or meron siyang commendation. At nakalagay dito yung doctrine and diligence. Tingnan nyo ha, babasahin ko sa inyo yung chapter 2 verse 2. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. And has born, and has patience, and for my name's sake, has labored, and has not fainted. Wow! Nakita nyo kung gaano ka sipag itong simbahang ito. No? Napaka, pagdating sa gawain ng Panginoon, talaga naman, commendable. No? Hindi sila tatamad-tamad. Nakita nyo, nakita nyo yung labor na word dyan, mabigat na salita yan. No? Almost kahit uh, puyat, no? kahit pagod, they will labor for God. Sila ay masisipag. Sila ay, uh, sabi dyan, patience. No? Patience in uh, times of trials and testings. Okay? So nakita nyo yung kanilang mga ginagawa no? bilang simbahan. <clears throat> now, as he walks among the churches, Lamstan, Christ is ever-present. He is the one who observes the testimony of the church in Asia. nag observe ang Panginoon sa atin, no? nag observe ang Panginoon as a, sa church, nag observe ang Panginoon individually. Kaya alam niya kung ano yung kondisyon ng ating mga puso, no? mga young people. He knows what's in my heart. He knows what are the things uh, that I'm doing for Him. He knows the things that you are doing also for Him. So His message is based on His knowledge of their notable and commendable works. And He will, He is judging or He is giving us some commendation according to our works. Kasi nagmamanifest sa ating gawa yung pagiging mananampalataya natin, di ba? At doon niya rin tayo i-judge. Kung yung work ba natin ay masusunog by far o makaka magkakaroon tayo ng reward someday. So, <clears throat> he mentions the hard work and patience of the church in Ephesus. Their abhorrence of those who are evil. Tinan nyo? and their false detection uh, their detection of false teachers parang ganito mga young people kunyari kilala nyo ba si Apollo Kibuloy kilala nyo ayun oh, kilala nyo di ba so kunyari si Apollo Kibuloy napunta sa church ng Mighty Fortress Baptist Church Makati okay okay uh, tawagin na po natin ang ating guest speaker no Mr. o pastor or siya ay ano na eh siya na daw si Jesus Christ no Panginoon na po siya Panginoon Oh siya na yung Jesus Christ di ba So si Jesus Christ kibuloy okay So ngayon sabi ng ibang member Amen no Amen Ay uh, wow speaker natin ang lupet no si Apollo Kibuloy 
<laughs> sa Ephesus, sa Ephesus hindi pwede 'yan. Malirnig pa lang nila yung pangalan, no, ng magiging speaker or ng tao na magsasalita. Ay, sasabihin na nila, "Oops, wait. Questionable 'yan. Hindi natin pwede 'yang uh, tawagin dito." Okay? So, pag pagdating sa mga sabi dito sa kanilang uh, detection ng false teacher, talagang matindi sila. Alam nila kung ang mga nagtuturo ay false or true preacher. ba? Diba? So, ganoon katindi ang knowledge ng mga Ephesus. Kasi nga, sino yung mga teachers nila? Si Timothy. Uh, sinabi pa dyan, most probably si Apollos. No? Kung kilala nyo si Apollos. Si uh, yung mag-asawa, si Aquila and Priscilla. No? So, si Aquila and Priscilla. Sinong babae doon? No? Si Priscilla. Si, hindi si Tita Chila nyo, no? saka si Tito Ernie. So, Aquila and Priscilla, Apollos, uh, Timothy, and then si, si John. Kita nyo yung mga pastors nila. So, it's easy for them to detect those false teachers. So, tayo kaya, no? Kayo kaya, mga young people. Pag kayong nagtuturo, observe. Kayo ba ay observant o yung isip nyo ba pag may mga nagtutu- may nagtuturo sa church? Do alam nyo, may tiwala kayo sa kanila. Pero paano pag iba na? No? Pag iba na yung nagturo. Kayo kaya ay parang mga berians. No? Kung tawagin, berians, they seek. If they, un- if really, kung yung sinasabi nila ay nasa salita ng Diyos. So kung <clears throat> pagdating sa, sa false teachers, they can easily detect no? yung mga maling katuroan. And then they abhor, sabi dito, they abhor evil. No? So kung nagsisinungaling yung teachers, they can they can detect it. Okay? So they are, sabi dito, thou cannot bear them which are evil, yung mga masasama at masasamang gawain, hindi nila masikmura. No? Pagka may mga maling ginagawa sa church, ah, hindi nila yun kayang ano, parang sikmurain no hindi nila malunok no? so ganun katindi ang church ng Ephesus and then the Ephesian church is commended by Christ for turning from both moral corruption and theological error now i know you i know you young people that before this pandemic started meron kayong pinag-aaralan na doctrine class no and i hope that you are You are ano, uh, young people, you appreciate that no, yung pag-aaral ng doktrina. At 'wag niyo yang katamaran, no. 'Wag niyo si ay ano ano ba tong pinag-aaralan namin, uh, doktrina naman no. 'Wag niyo yang katamaran dahil ang mga doktrina ay ang magbibigay sa inyo, magpapatibay sa inyo. Kagaya nito sa Church ng Ephesus. No? They can easily detect the false teachings and false teachers. And Christ commended them for that. And I know na kayo dyan, kagaya namin, kung paano kami na-train dyan, ganun din. No? Tinuturo sa inyo yung, uh, sige nga, anong mga, tin- sige, mag- mag-unmute. Ano yung mga lesson na natutunan nyo sa, ano, sa youth? Kasi, you know, uh, before I left there, no, the, mad- the before we left there, dyan sa Mother Church, That was my ano my goal really na kasi noon noon nga puro fellowship na lang ang ginagawa namin paano pagagandahin yung program no paano kaya natin i-gather yung mga young people ah sige magganta maglagay tayo ng ganitong program magbigay tayo ng dance contest hindi joke lang hindi na iniisip yun no yung mga kunyari may talent fest may cooking fest lahat na lang ng fest, kulang na lang magfiesta sa church, no? Para lang magather yung young people. But let, come, come to the point na sabi ko, it's not about that, no? Hindi about yung fellowship or yung cooking fest. It's about the doctrine that will establish you. No? Hindi yung kung ano-anong mga bagay. O magkaroon kaya tayo ng ano, counter-strike fellowship, no? Hindi nyo na alam yung counter-strike, no? Kami, yun yung inabutan namin na laro. O kaya yung, ano yun? Star, ano yun? Uh, Starcraft. Starcraft, yan. Starcraft Fellowship. Para yung mga young people pumunta sa church, no? So, ganyan yung mga iba. At minsan, dumating kami sa ganyang point na konti lang, isang parang may part na nagsama-sama kami sa isang computer shop, naglaro kami, no? And it's a waste of time, of course. 
it's not about that. So, nasa na yung mga young people na nakasama namin? Wala na rin. Nasa loob na ng Counter-Strike tsaka ng Starcraft. Sila na mismo yung nandoon sa loob. No? So, it's not about that. It's about the doctrines that will establish you and will strengthen you. Sige, magbigay kayo ng topic na tatandaan ninyo sa Friday School. Ah, sa Friday School. <laughs> sa inyong... <laughs> sa inyong youth kasi kami dito Friday school no sa inyo Sunday school sa inyong Sunday school sa inyong youth fellowship ano na ang mga topic na napag-aralan ninyo sige sinong magsasalita kahit dalawa lang say notes pneumatology ha sino yun pneumatology pneumatology na sa sige si Michael ata yun ha wait lang Brother Michael, no? Ikaw yan? Ninanap kita sa ano? Sige. Ano yung pneumatology, Brother Michael? Um, Ay, ano? Tamay? <laughs> <laughs> yung ano? Nagpapamanicure? Sige, ano yun? Uh, doctrine of Holy Spirit. Yes, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. ba? Diba? So, sino pa ang myology na alam dyan? So, under, yung, under, yung pneumatology is under ng anong branch? Ng, ano, ng pag-aaral ninyo? Under? Doctor. <laughs> yeah, under the? Doctrine of ano? Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hindi. Sa, saan yan? Ang, ang generally, yung general na team nyo. ba? Diba? That is uh, under the subject of uh, theology. ba? Diba? Theology. So, pneumatology. Pinag-aaralan nyo. Uh, ano pa? napag-aralan. Ano pang napag-aralan nyo bukod dyan? Bukod sa pneumatology. Zoology, napag-aralan nyo? <laughs> Kaya ano yun? Kay Rachel Lata, zoology, nasa ano ba yan? <laughs> biology. O, yung biology. De, ano pa? So, I hope that You know, you know yung mga doctrines na yon at kahit pa paano alam nyo yung tinuturo para later on, pag naka-encounter kayo ng mga kaklase ninyo na uh, nagsasabi na ganito, ganito, ganyan, alam nyo i-defend no? yung inyo faith. So, sige, hindi ko nakitatanong eh. Next time, mag-ready kayo ha. So, the efficient, efficient church is commended by Christ for turning both moral corruption and theological error. Pagka may mali din na ginagawa sa church, limbawa, may mga kasalanan na nasa church, hindi nila yon uh, tinotolerate. Okay? So, napakaganda nung uh, positive no, na commendation sa kanila ng Panginoon. At alam na alam niya kung ano yung uh, well, uh, yung commendable things dito sa church na ito. And also, the patient way these believers are bearing their burdens is a strong contrast to the refusal to, de- to bear Evil. Tingnan nyo dun sa verse 3. Chapter 2, verse 3. And as born and as patience and for my namesake as labored and has never or has not fainted. Nakita nyo yung kanilang patience. Alam nyo, during their time, mga young people, hindi madali na maging kristyano. Okay? Hindi madali ang pagiging... Kumbaga ngayon, madaling maging kristyano. Tama ba? Meron bang nagpo-persecute sa inyo? Meron ba ang pag nagpray kayo eh ngayon ha I don't know kung sa Philippines may pinagtatawanan ba kayo pag nagpray kayo kunyari pinagpray niyo yung pagkain yung iba nga nahihiya pang ipagpray yung pagkain habang kumakain nakaka-experience ba kayo na pag nagsabi kayo ay baptis ako ay ano ano baptis ka yak no walang ganoon wala kayong nararanasan at ito hindi lang ganoon yung nararanasan nila Some of them will even die because of their faith. E pwede sa lang mamatay dahil sa kanilang pananampalataya. Pag-aaralan natin 'yon sa uh, mga susunod na pag-aaral natin. They they will die because of their faith, no? And also, the, hindi madali ang kanilang mga ginagawa, no? Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo diyan, yung pagiging yung labor na word, talagang matinding pagpapagal, no? Kahit mapagod sila sa gawain ng Panginoon, they are ready. So, they are also patient with one another. Uh, mapagpasensya sila sa isa't isa, of course, kung hindi, sila, hindi sasabihin ng Panginoon yon. So, minsan kasi tayong sa, sa church, di ba, parang may 
nag ano, meron tayong mga misunderstanding, yung mga mag, mga MU no, misunderstanding, may mga attitude problem, character problem, may mga parang hindi natin gusto yung ugali, 'di ba? Merong mga ganyan. Sila patient sila, hindi lamang sa, of course, I don't say sa problem, but even patient sila with each other, no? They are patient with each other, they are patient with the trials that they are encountering sa mga testings, na mga burdens na pinagdaraanan nila, no? Patient din sila sa uh, maybe for disciplining people na hindi sumusunod sa gawain sa uh, gawain ng Panginoon, no? So they are these are the things that have been commended by God to them. And this church of Ephesus has served Christ well, no? So they serve Christ well. Talaga namang uh, nakaka-bless when it comes to their <coughs> to their to the things that they are doing for God, for Christ, they are growing. They are growing. So yan yung mga uh, dapat nating gayahin, no? Mga young people dito sa church na ito, sa church at of Ephesus. Okay? So i-stop tayo diyan sa pang ilang siyan so nag-start tayo sa city short description ng city and then the uh, chosen title of Christ and then the commendation no the commendation so diyan tayo magi stop ngayon mga young people para hindi rin kayo masyadong malate at uh, pag-aaralan natin yung ilang pang C. So ilang C 'yon, 'di ba? 7, no? 7 Cs. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, pag naganap kayo ng 7 ng sa Revelation, nagbasa kayo ng ng Revelation, hanapin niyo yung mga 7s. No, maraming hidden 7s, maraming 7s diyan na word sa Revelation. So ganoon din tayo, 7 din yung ating uh, ang ating outline, no? ito rin yung outline natin diyan sa revelation no so yan yung ating uh, discussion for this day, for this night so i will stop sharing this para makita ko na kayong lahat no so ayan so kung sa naka laptop kayo nagkakitaan kayong lahat so do you have any questions additions or inquiry So ang homework ninyo ganito. Ah uh, hindi niyo gagawin 'yan sa Ephesus kasi ginawa ko na no. Nakapagsimula na ako. Basahin niyo na ang sabi ko at basahin niyo yung chapter 2 and 3, 'di ba? So mag-focus kayo sa next church yung Smyrna and then next uh, hindi next lesson. Pagka ibig sabihin may time kayo na gawin 'yan. Tapos pagpatapos na tayo sa Ephesus sa Smyrna, kayo muna yung tatanungin ko kung paano yung outline ninyo. Hahanapin nyo yung 7 na letter C sa church ng Smyrna. And, o, oh, tsaka na yung Pergamos. Smyrna na muna. Okay? So, hanapin nyo yung 7C doon sa church ng Smyrna. Tapos, magtatawag ako, magre-recitation. Huwag kayong matakot, ha? If you have, uh, but I hope, give your best to do it. no Give your best. Napakadali lang naman. Babasahin nyo lang yan at i-outline yeah, nyo lang. So, give your best to do it. Uh, pag natawag ko kayo, eh, sana ma-mention nyo yan. Pag hindi, it's fine. Okay? It's fine. Just be here and continue to listen. Okay? So, yun lang yung ating lesson for this uh, for this, uh, for this this evening. So, wala ba kayong questions? Oh, sige, smile. Oh, smile na. Magano na tayo. Mag-picture taking tayo. Okay? Magpipicture tayo. So, nandiyan si, si Earl. Jan, John. Okay? So, sige. One. Sandre. One, two, three. Smile. Okay. Sige. Yan ako na to, ha. Request ko na muna si uh, Nathan. Please close us in a word of prayer, Nathan.
So, I can stop the video recording. Tapos makapag-fellowship. Uh, Nathan, we cannot hear you. Sorry. We cannot hear you. Okay. Sige po. Ayan. <laughs> uh, may ano po kasi yung mic. <laughs> okay. Sige. Okay. Let's pray po. Lord, salamat po sa pagkakataon na ito na binigay niya sa amin. Uh, bigyan po kami ng chance upang matuto po ng inyong salita further to know more about you and to strengthen our faith yes. upang po malaman po namin kung sino po talaga ang uh, tunay na nagsasalita sa harap, sino ang, uh, sino ang totoo po na uh, sumasamba po sa inyo. Salamat po Lord sa mga kalakasan na binibigay niyo po sa amin. Lalo, lalo na po ngayon sa may hirap na oras na ito na may kumakalat na sakit. Uh, salamat po Lord sa patuloy ng paggabay sa amin at pag-iingat po sa amin upang kami ay uh, tuloy-tuloy na makapag-samba uh, samba po pa sa inyo. Uh, Lord, salamat po talaga sa blessings na binigay niyo sa amin. Uh, tuloy niyo pong binibigay sa amin dati po at uh, magka- magpakailanman. Salamat po, Lord, sa protection na binigay niyo. Patawarin niyo po kami, Lord, sa mga kasalanan na gawa namin. Uh, pagkakataon na uh, kinulang po kami, uh, pagkakataon na uh, hindi po namin uh, gawa ang mga dapat namin gawin, Uh, patawarin niyo po kami, Lord, at patuloy niyo po kami bigyan ng lakas upang uh, ibahagi ang iyong salita. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I'll stop this first. Pero hindi ko stop yung video. Wait lang. <laughs>